Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniela. I'm Ida Boy's Director of Strategic Programs. And uh, as you notice in the last few weeks, I'm leading this uh, task of uh, assigning chairs to the technical sessions. So I would like to thank you very much and to welcome you to uh, the last preparatory meeting that we are having for the chairs, for uh, the IWA members that volunteer to be chairing a session at the 2022 World Water Congress uh, is starting in 10 days from now in Copenhagen. Uh, we are gonna start uh, this session with a um, uh, short, um, speech from our uh, executive director, Kala. Uh, he's gonna be giving us some uh, welcome welcome remarks. To you, Kala. Thanks, Daniela, and hi, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. Um, it's very nice to see so many of you on the call. Um, I just really wanted to say a few words uh, to you all uh, before you kick off the meeting. And uh, first of all, I would just like to thank you um, really sincerely for all of the hard work that you're putting in to supporting us in this conference and also your, um, your offer to chair and co-chair the technical sessions that we have in Copenhagen. Um, you know that IWA is a membership association and it's only through the activities of our members and our supporters that we are able to deliver such a good service. Um, and our World Water Congresses, you know, have this huge reputation, right, of being really, really technically very strong, but also run very efficiently. And it's because of, of service of, of people like yourselves that we're able to do that. Um, this conference in Copenhagen is likely to be the largest World Water Congress we've had historically. The, the numbers in terms of registration are extremely high. They are overtaking the numbers we had in Tokyo, which was the, the previous largest conference we've had. And so it's going to be an extremely successful conference, um, both in terms of the numbers of people coming, but we have fantastic technical sessions. I think we have over 100 technical sessions. We have something like 60 workshops, and of course we have a plenary sessions. So it's a very uh, intense uh, week. And the program is also very intense, but if you read the details of the program, we have you know, some fantastic papers being presented throughout the conference. Um, this is the first outing that IWA has had um, since COVID, big, big outing. We've had some smaller events uh, since COVID, but the last big conference we had was our Development Congress, which was in 2019 in Colombo. And of course, we had our World Water Congress in Tokyo in 2018. So we are actually, as a secretariat, uh, we are quite nervous. We're quite anxious about the next couple of weeks because we haven't delivered such a big event uh, for such a long time. And, and also, you know, we, we've, we've had some transitions within the organization. We moved from the Netherlands to London, and that's created certain challenges. So it's going to be a quite an interesting couple of weeks for us. But I believe that with the help and support of yourselves, that we can put on a really, really excellent conference. We have some fantastic keynote speakers for our plenary sessions. We have some really good workshops going on. Of course, we've got fantastic technical sessions. There'll be some high level activities. We have a high level summit. We have our utility leaders forum. We have a regulators forum. So it's really going to be, like I said, very intense, very diverse in terms of the activities that, that are gonna take place. I would also like to thank my, my staff, you know, Daniela, Isabella, uh, Aisha, Kazito. You know, we, we have a lot of people working in the background at the Secretariat supporting this event. You know, I get to speak to you all, but actually most of the work is being done by the, the staff here at, at, at the Secretariat. So I'd like to also thank them. So with that, I, I'd like to close. I'd like to, again, um, honestly and very sincerely thank you for all your hard work. We really, really appreciate everything that you do for IWA. Um, I really hope that I get a chance to meet many of you during the conference. I know many of you quite well. And so I really do hope that I get a chance to meet with you during the conference. I will be very frequently at the IWA stand. So please come along to the stand and, and say hello. But I wish you all well. I think the conference is going to be a great success. And, you know, I hope that you enjoy 
the experience of chairing, but also attending the conference. So with that, I'll hand back to Daniela. Thank you, Carla. Uh, so before I start my presentation, I will introduce uh, our two colleagues that are here today with us. Uh, so Isabella, you are on camera, yes. Uh, Isabella, some of you already know, she is the membership engagement officer responsible for the Young Water Professional community. Uh, so uh, probably all Young Water Professionals that are here today uh, have already uh, somehow interacted with, with Isabella. And she's gonna be uh, supporting us with the um, chat box. So you can, you can propose questions uh, by the end of the presentation, you can come to camera and uh, and speak. But if you want to share some questions uh, in the chat box, uh, you are welcome. Uh, and Aisha Nichols, uh, she's here as well. She uh, is the the global events and awards uh, officer. She's already in Copenhagen now. And uh, she will be supporting us with the questions because sometimes the questions that come are more related to the Congress organization than to the session itself. So Aisha is here to support me uh, if, I, if uh, there are some questions um, more specific that has to be addressed, have to be addressed by her. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen now. Yeah, I think now you can see the presentation. Um, so uh, our uh, agenda today, we had this short welcoming from uh, Kala. Uh, then I'm gonna go through a very quick overview of the Congress program. Uh, we will discuss uh, the technical session structure. Uh, following, I will talk a bit about the roles and responsibilities of the chairs uh, and explain how you can contact both uh, your co-chair and the speakers uh, from your session. And uh, then we're going to have the the longer part, longest part of the meeting that is the Q and A session. Uh, that was quite interesting in the other two meetings. So this is uh, a brief overview of the program. You can find more details uh, in the website. Uh, but we'll have daily. We'll have the opening ceremony on Sunday, uh, and daily from Monday to Thursday we will have two keynote uh, plenaries. Uh, one early morning at nine and one uh, late afternoon. Uh, I think it's seven, I think it's 5.30 or 5.44 that we will start. Uh, and during the day, we'll have three slots for technical sessions, uh, one in the morning and two in the afternoon. Uh, in those slots, we'll have 100 technical sessions with uh, um, papers being presented, and we'll have around 60 uh, workshops that were uh, proposed by, uh, by members and approved by the program committee uh, and are engaged in each one usually around five to six speakers. So today we are here to talk about the technical sessions that will be uh, held in those three slots. Uh, as I mentioned, the three slots, uh, they should start at 10.30, 1.30 and uh, 3.45 p.m. except on Thursday, the last day of the Congress, uh, because on Thursday we won't have the last uh, slot. The slot at 15.45 uh, won't happen because we will have the closing ceremony is starting just a few minutes after that. Uh, the usual program of each session uh, is three full presentations, so three papers to be presented uh, for 12 minutes each. Each presenter will have 12 minutes to, to speak. And we'll have also three poster pitches, so very short presentations of around three to four minutes at most, uh, followed by a Q&A session and ideally for a discussion moment uh, that you can interact and engage the audience. Uh, in each session, we will have two chairs uh, who will be responsible jointly by running the section. Uh, what we emphasize here, uh, we are changing, this was a decision from the program committee, we are changing a bit the structure of the, the tests for, for the chair. Um, usually in the events before uh, COVID, uh, we had a chair and a rapporteur in each session. Uh, in the digital Congress that happened last uh, year in May, uh, we had a chair and a co-chair, and we had assigned very clear tasks to the chair and to the co-chair, different tasks. Uh, it was a more complex uh, session to run because we had the 
uh, to, to operate Zoom and we had to uh, do, to get the the, um, the questions from the, um, the chat box. It was a bit complex, so we had very clear tasks. This time, uh, we are not having an assigned chair and an assigned co-chair. We are having two chairs, and it's up to you, to the two chairs, to discuss between yourselves uh, who is going to be playing each of the tasks that are expected from you. So uh, it, this is totally flexible. It depends on who will feel more comfortable uh, doing each task, okay? That's why we ask you to discuss with your chair, co-chair and um, have a plan for the session to have very clear who's gonna be doing what. Uh, we try to allocate to all sessions, one senior professional and one young water professional to give chances to give the floor for this, uh, these young water professionals and then so they can uh, network and then can they can learn from uh, the great experience of uh, working with a more senior professional. Uh, we didn't manage to do that to all sessions. Uh, I don't have the exact number here. Most of them, yes, most of them you have one young water professional and one senior professional, but some sessions, especially on Tuesday, we didn't manage to assign a young water professionals, a professional because we have the Emerging Water Leaders Forum uh, being, uh, uh, that will be happening on Tuesday as well. And most of our young water professionals are joining this forum. So especially on Tuesday, most of the sessions will have two senior uh, chairs running. So the structure of the session, uh, this is quite flexible and you'll be able to adjust this structure that we are suggesting here. So we are suggesting five minutes for um, an introduction uh, moment where you can introduce yourself, talk a bit about uh, you, the two chairs, and introduce the session, what it is about, uh, and to have like some uh, icebreaking conversations. Then uh, you call the first presentation, introduce the author. The author will have 12 minutes to speak. And then you can have like a short two to three minutes Q&A uh, moment just for them to clarify some points. Then you have the same with the second and the third uh, presentation. Then you can call the poster pictures, also introducing the, um, the speakers. Those presentations will be much shorter, so it doesn't really make sense to have a QA uh, moment after the, 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 these presentations. And then, if you do like that, you have 25 uh, minutes for a panel discussion where you can uh, connect, let's say, the, the, the papers and you can engage the audience uh, in the de debate. Uh, after that, you have five minutes to wrap up to conclude the session. This is just a suggestion, I emphasize. You can discuss um, between, you, uh, between the chairs, you can discuss and come up with something different, but you must um, follow the timing for the papers. So each paper is 12 minutes and it, each poster repeats three minutes. Uh, so this is strict. You should be strict about that. But the Q&A, you can have uh, longer Q&As after each presentation or a longer Q&A session at the, at the end. This is totally up to you. Yesterday, there was a quite an interesting discussion. Some of the chairs, more experienced chairs, were uh, advocating for the, the, the option of having a longer uh, session by the end of, uh, of the presentations. Some of other others, uh, chairs also experienced said, no, it depends on the papers. So yes, uh, it's totally up to you. So we suggest, especially after you have read uh, the abstracts that you discuss uh, with your co-chair and define that. The roles and responsibilities is expected from the chairs. And as I mentioned, I emphasize here, it's up to you to define who's gonna be doing what. So prior to the session, uh, you should contact your co-chair and ensure you build this, uh, this plan uh, for how to uh, run your session. Uh, we strongly suggest that you read the abstracts of the papers uh, that will be presented in your session and prepare uh, some questions to be addressed by the speakers in case there are no questions coming from the audience. And probably most of you that are experienced chairs know that this is happens very often. Uh, the audience is a bit sh ashamed, shy in the beginning, and they don't come up with questions. So it's important that you have some prepared questions to, to ice break. 
Uh, here I informed that the abstracts will be sent to all chairs uh, by this Friday, by tomorrow. Uh, I, will mail, I, I will email all of you with the recording of the session and uh, the list of uh, papers and the link for the abstracts tomorrow. Uh, and you should also, on the day of the session, you should be there around like 20 minutes before and check uh, if all speakers or presenters are there. And if one of them does not arrive, uh, let's say about five minutes before the start, uh, then you should contact uh, the organization and we can try to uh, reach out to them. Uh, there's going to be a volunteer in your room so you can ask this volunteer this volunteer will contact us we will be able to access uh, the information of who is there because uh, they have to check in when entering the venue so we'll be able to understand if the person is there and uh, at the venue and it's not in the room uh, or if the person didn't check in at that time and so we inform you and then you can manage uh, the the best possible uh, solution during the session, uh, that's the quite usual uh, tasks uh, to be performed as chair in uh, as the chair of a session. So we will be open the session, welcoming the audience, uh, providing some housekeeping rules and the agenda of the day. You'll be introducing the speakers and the presentations. We'll conduct the Q&A session. Uh, we ask you to ensure uh, that they respect time. Uh, of course, this is not so strict as the uh, digital Congress, where uh, at that time our, our Zoom session was going to uh, stop, so you really need to be very strict with time. Uh, but here we also ask you, although we have uh, a long break between sessions, we kindly ask you to um, enforce the, the, to, the, to the speakers that they must respect time. Uh, you should also capture the key outcomes of the session. This is very important, uh, and that's why you have to set two chairs because I know it's difficult to do everything at the same time. Uh, so one of the chairs should be capturing the key outcomes of the session and uh, of the discussion um, after the, the presentations for two reasons. One, because this will help you uh, performing your last task in the session that is wrapping up the session, uh, but also because you need to report, uh, present a short report about the session. And so we come to the after session tasks, and this is the most important one. Uh, you are requested to uh, submit a very short summary of the session discussions and outcomes. We provided a template. It's a link uh, in the guidance written document that I uh, shared with you a couple of days ago. So if you click there, you, it's gonna open um, a Word document. It's really, really simple. Basically, it's your name, uh, the name of the session, code of the session, the, your name, uh, and then a very short report of each um, presentation and uh, any potential outcomes from uh, the discussions. Uh, this report will be used uh, for you, to, uh, of course, to summarize the, the, the session. And it will be used also uh, at the closing ceremony because you have a panel uh, led by one of the program committee members with six volunteers that will be bringing the, um, the key outcomes of each, each of the six Congress themes. Uh, and so your report will be providing inputs to uh, these uh, rapporteurs uh, to bring the discussion to the floor uh, at the closing ceremony. And also the, uh, these reports will be used uh, internally by uh, the Secretariat uh, as inputs for the next uh, World Order Congress uh, that will be ha happening in 2024 in, in um, Canada. Uh, so th this will help also uh, us to shape the new, the new uh, Congress. Uh, the report should be sent uh, by the end of the day. Uh, in the guidance, in the written guidance, there's the email address. It's the, the World Water Congress that you are you are used to to use uh, if you have emailed uh, the Congress already. And so you should um, send this by the end of the day, uh, except for the sections held on Thursday, especially the one the ones held on Thursday, 1.30 p.m. We kindly ask you to um, 
deliver your report as soon as possible because we'll have the the break and then the um, the closing ceremony so if you manage to send them a few minutes after your session we'll be able to include those uh, your your points uh, at the at the discussions during the closing ceremony so contacting your co-chair and speakers, uh, you have already the email address of your co-chairs I, I shared already with you. Uh, some, some of you have copied me, so I know that many of you are already discussing uh, with your co-chair, that's great. Uh, and you will also receive, as I mentioned, an email from me tomorrow, uh, where I'm going to be uh, listing the papers uh, to be presented in your session and providing a link for the abstracts of those papers. Please feel free to contact uh, the authors uh, after you read the abstracts, because in each abstract there's the name of the author and their email addresses. So uh, we cannot officially inform you their, their email addresses for GDPR reasons, uh, but as you have the, the, the abstract, you'll be able to contact them. Uh, so if you want, if you feel it's necessary for you to agree on some uh, prepared questions, or if you want to have like a short CV from them to introduce them, please feel free to email them. That is also an opportunity for networking. Um, abstracts will be also available on the Congress app. Uh, but this is going to be just a few days before the Congress next week, by probably uh, late next week. So you'll also be able to access the, um, the, the apps through the, this uh, app. Well, finally, the question and answers. Uh, the first meeting this slide was, was uh, empty. Then I populated it with the main questions uh, uh, raised during our first meeting last week. Uh, I have some other questions that were raised yesterday that I'm going to be um, discussing with you. I didn't have time. The, the meeting was yesterday evening. I didn't have time to update the slides, so I'm sorry, but I have them here. So um, I'm going to discuss it and we'll have probably questions from you. Uh, and with the, the three group of questions, I'm going to be putting together um, a frequent asked questions document that will be also shared with you uh, tomorrow, okay? So from the meeting uh, hosted last week on the 25, the questions raised were if this recording of this meeting and this presentation will be shared with you, and the answer is yes. We, are, we recorded the three presentations. I think we are gonna be sharing this one as this is the more, most complete one. Uh, and <clears throat> the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation, and this uh, frequent asked question list, uh, uh, to, we are going to be sharing that with you tomorrow. Uh, second question was if the technical sessions in Copenhagen will be recorded, and the answer is no. Uh, during the Congress, only the plenaries will be recorded. Um, one chair also asked if, when introducing the speakers, uh, if the chair should provide some information regarding their CVs or simply saying uh, uh, the name uh, of the speaker and the name of the, um, of the paper. Uh, this is totally up to you. If you feel it's important um, for the show, let's say, for, for uh, the session to run smoothly, you can. Um, Personally, I think it's interesting to present a very, very short uh, CV so you don't lose time as well, of course. Uh, but it, it, it's interesting to give at least some context um, the expertise of the, of the speaker and uh, which institution he's coming from. Uh, and so uh, we encourage you when you receive the abstract that you have access to the, their email addresses that you can uh, reach out to them and uh, ask for some information. Uh, another question, another interesting question that was uh, raised in the first meeting was if the housekeeping rules that should be mentioned when opening the session uh, should also include security rules provided by the venue. Uh, and the answer here is no. Uh, housekeeping rules uh, you should be informing uh, at the beginning of your session uh, should be only related on how to run the session, how many minutes each speaker will have, uh, when the question and answer moment will happen. Uh, the venue is, uh, a, is a huge venue and they run uh, 
lots of um, events monthly and they have their own uh, security rules uh, informed uh, in many different and uh, strategic locations uh, at the venue so you don't have to worry about this um, i think yes i think those were the questions from the first session first meeting last week so yesterday um some of the questions raised about the posters, um, one of the questions was if the poster presenters will have slides, and the answer is yes, they can have slides, but probably uh, Aisha can say if there's a limit, but I think like two or three. Yep, you're correct. Exactly. Three yeah, slides. so three slides. So they will have slides as well. Um, and uh, another, set, I think a question from somebody else, but also about the about posters, was about the poster sessions. If uh, the poster presenters will have, as sometimes, uh, very often it happens in Congresses, uh, that they will have um, a specific time slot that they should be uh, standing up next to the poster to, to be available um, to discuss the, pro the, the poster. Uh, and the answer is no, there's no uh, strict time, although they can be there anytime they want. Uh, and uh, we asked the posters to provide a QR code so um, the attendees, the delegates can go there and scan the QR code and get more information about the posters. So there's not going to be uh, one single slot for them to be next to their posters. Um, so this was one question. Uh, an interesting question was if uh, after reading the papers, the, the abstracts, if you feel like the order of the papers in your session is not the ideal under your perspective, uh, if you are allowed to change this order, we kindly ask you not to do that. Uh, the order was defined by the program committee. So, um, should make sense. Uh, and um, some people, you know, they change rooms, they expect to attend the first uh, presentation in one room and the third presentation in another room. So this can, can be a problem for them. So we kindly ask you not to change the order. Um, and these questions, if the poster will have strict time. Oh, about how you can control your time. We were asked if you would have um, uh, the clock showing uh, at the screen. And no, you're not going to be having the clock. So you have to control the time um, by yourself. Uh, we had the suggestion that we could have cards like the yellow and red cards for showing the time for the presenters that that's going to be considered. I still didn't discuss that with our events team uh, as the meeting was yesterday, but we'll be considering this su suggestion. Um, and that's up to you to, to control the, the time. As I mentioned, uh, it's not as strict as in a remote uh, uh, event, uh, but we, we cannot afford too much delay. So, uh, and another question that it will also be, it was a suggestion, not a question, if we could have like written like paper cards that um, the, the, the audience could write the question in advance and instead of going to the microphone. Uh, this was an interesting suggestion that I'm also gonna take to our events team. Uh, I believe, oh, okay. The last one was also a request if we could share um, like the ideal, um, the ideal, uh, summary of a session, uh, considering th this was more or less the same template that we used in the Digital Congress last year. So the chairs asked if we could uh, uh, share the like an ideal report made for the created for the, um, the Digital Congress. I'm going to check with our events team if we can identify one uh, that could be followed uh, as the template is empty. It's just the, the table. Uh, so if we could share with you um, and a good example, okay? Uh, this is also a suggestion that I'm gonna take to our events director, Kizito, to discuss. So that's it for my, from my side. You all have my email address uh, and please feel free to contact me anytime you need. So uh, I, can, uh, I can address uh, any further questions that you may have. I'll stop sharing my screen now.
thank you very much for your attention. It was uh, a longer presentation today <laughs> because the questions, <laughs> I'm adding the questions, so each day, the, each meeting, the presentation is a bit longer. Uh, and please feel free to come uh, on camera and to state your questions or to share your questions through the chat box. Daniela, we already received some questions in the chat. I don't know if you want to start with this, but yeah, otherwise, maybe. okay. So we received a question from Martin asking if uh, they get to see the presentations and papers before the sessions. Okay, uh, the papers, the abstracts will be sent to you, not the full papers, but the abstracts will be sent to you tomorrow. So you'll be able to read all the six papers. I, I think I forgot to mention during the meeting, the six and three is the usual structure. So most sections will have three full papers and three poster pictures. Some sessions, just a few ones, will have four papers and two poster pictures or something like that, okay? But anyway, uh, <laughs> independently of the name, number of papers, you'll receive that tomorrow, so you'll be able to, to read. And about the presentations, uh, they have they are sharing the presentations. Aisha, can you clarify if the, the chairs will be having access to, to the presentations? Not the presentations, no. no. Um, but um, everything will be in the app anyway, so you will be able to get the recordings, um, bios, uh, every kind of material in okay. the app. Okay, so, so once the app, uh, so okay, so you have access to the abstracts tomorrow by email, and once the app is available, probably one week from now, then you have access to the presentations. That, that's the, the, the question, thank you. Next, Isabella. Um... They ask if they're going to get the bios of the speakers. Okay, the bios, uh, no, the bios, uh, we are not allowed to, to share, uh, but you have uh, access to their email addresses once you, you, you open the abstracts. Uh, colleagues, sorry to interrupt the meeting. I think you can see how I'm wearing. <laughs> if what is fetching me, I'm, I'm going doing some catchment surveys. Okay. So thank you very much for the fruitful meeting. I'll be in touch with you. Okay, thank you very much, Esper, to, to, <laughs> to join us. Okay, so um, what? where was that? <laughs> what, Regarding the, the bios. Oh, the bios, yes. No, uh, we are not sharing the bios. Uh, this is a um, controversial issue if you can or, not, or, or cannot share uh, due to GDPR reasons. Um, but you have access to their email addresses. Once you open the, the abstracts, there's the name of all authors and their email addresses. So uh, if you feel it, uh, your session will be more interesting if you share a bit of information about the, the, the speakers, you can email them and ask for, for a short, like two or three line um, bio. Uh, following this, there was another question about timekeeping, uh, if there's going to be any timekeeping keep, cards, but you already discussed this. Yes, yes. The, this was a suggestion and yeah. I'm gonna discuss with, with our event director. And a question regarding copies of the presentations. We also okay. discussed it. And let me say, uh, is the poster pitch presentation pre-recorded or poster pitch speakers have to be also present in the room? The poster pitches will be presented, presented in the room. They will be there to physically present. Uh, although they have all, all speakers, posters and papers, they have uh, shared with us the pre-recorded presentations and this is gonna be um, available at the app, uh, on the app, uh, but they will also be physically in the session. This was the last question <laughs> okay. that we had in the chat. Okay. So the floor is open. If so, sorry, I had a question you. which you, yes. you passed through oh. because it's quite important to us. When is the detailed program available? People cannot buy one day tickets because they don't know what is in the sessions. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Aisha? Do you know this information? Um, I'm, I'm asking so, for my colleague Aisha, that is from, yeah. the, from our event team. We Aisha. are hoping to get that onto the website as soon as possible, because people have been asking for the program. So uh, possibly by early next week, that full program will be on the site. Can I have a question? Yes, sure, uh, please. Uh, you are sending out the abstracts. Why don't you send out the full papers? If we're going to do a good sharing job, we should read the papers in advance, not only the abstracts. 
-hmm. Okay. Uh, what I was, uh, what I was, what, what, why I received uh, were just the abstracts. So Aisha, uh, would it be possible to share uh, the full papers or not? Not yeah. all our presenters have opted to send through full papers, um, which yeah, it's optional to the presenters themselves. So it's not something we could provide you fully. The abstracts is something we definitely can send through to you. And you obviously have a good overview of what the paper is about. Um, and it is quite a detailed, yeah, kind of pieces, three pages, three to four pages of the actual, um, yeah, um, presentations themselves. So that's the only reason why you can't get the full papers. Okay, thank you. To, to, to be honest, I support uh, Harvard's question uh, because we also have to prepare questions uh, to the speaker in case there is no question from the audience. And that, in my professional experience, can't be based on an abstract only. Uh, so it would be great if we had the opportunity to, uh, to see the full papers. But I think uh, Harvard and, and other colleagues, we can also ask for them when we uh, contact the speakers uh, for their bios. So more yeah. or less, uh, we can yeah. take action our, uh, ourselves. Yeah. I have an, another you. question to you. Thank uh, you. Uh, Just about that. Thank you, Cor. As Aisha mentioned, uh, we, do, we don't have the full papers. of s Some of them we have, some of them we don't. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's uh, an extended abstract. It's not just like a couple of two or three paragraphs. It's, it's a three to four pages document. But if you feel uh, you need more information, please uh, feel free to contact the um, uh, the authors, I think your suggestion was quite quite interesting. Yeah. And, and the question I have is, uh, or also a remark perhaps, uh, I, I absolutely like the, the uh, flexibility, but if we want to allow people to uh, attend uh, presentation number one in our technical session, then drop off to presentation number two in the other session, we more or less have to stick to the uh, 12 minutes and three minutes for Q&A because otherwise people leave the room in the expectation that they will have uh, uh, the start and finish of a second presentation. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 there is flexibility, but on the other hand, it's always better to stick a little bit to the 15 minutes for each, uh, for each presenter. Yes, yes. Thank you for your comment. Uh, I fully agree with that, especially. And another point that th th this is my personal view about uh, uh, chairing. For instance, if you don't give any time for um, for Q&A straight, straight after the presentation, some of the questions are just clarification questions, you know, that you, you, you um, uh, the person that is asking says, okay, can you go back to slide number three, you know, I have uh, that table that you showed, you know, so this is kind of complicated to, to, to make those kind of questions by the end of the session, so that the that's very important, in my opinion, to have this very, even if it's just two or three minutes for some clarifications questions. So that's why the, the suggested structure mentions that uh, small slot for questions after each paper. So your comment totally makes sense. Thank you. And, and, and yours also, because that means uh, that clarifications uh, should have priority in the three minutes Q&A and questions that could lead to very interesting plenary exactly. discussion should be saved to uh, the, the, the plenary Q&A yes. after the presentations. Yeah, that's exactly. great. Yeah. yeah, and that's the, I would say that the art of being a chair, uh, being a chair is not something so, so easy as some people think. Uh, so we, all have, we all have participated in sessions that are just like a, uh, a list of questions to each speaker and that's it and sessions where we can actually have a debate uh, and those are much more interesting and we learn much more and network you know so ideally we can have many of those uh, interesting sessions at the at the congress I, I, i'm sure we will i'm confident we will anyone else just another comment on the detailed program. I don't know. I think it is the latest that it has ever been sent out. People try to plan because there are so many parallel things, so many interesting things. And basically, many of the sessions are not a black box. You don't know what is going to happen and what is being presented exactly. Mm -hmm. Might be something about water chemicals and, and what, what does that mean? And there are three different sessions on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be difficult. Um, to, to plan your attendance, the, the later we are getting this detailed program. Yes, uh, thank you for that. And uh, we are aware of that. 
just just a bit of a contest. Usually, the congress is planned two years in advance. Uh, so you probably notice. Uh, most of you are used to, to, to come to our congresses before. Uh, this year, due to COVID um, situation, the, the Congress um, start was later than usual because until last year, we in, instead of having the two year cycle, we had a one year cycle because last year it was just by the end of the year that it was defined, yes, the Congress is happening no matter what. Uh, and even the discussion was if the Congress is not ha uh, happening this year, if COVID keeps going and we cannot have uh, the physical Congress this year, we will have it in the next year or not. So it was a discussion. Uh, so that's why everything is delayed. Uh, and unfortunately, the full pro program as well. Uh, it should have been uh, online weeks ago, and it's not. So we really apologize. Uh, but this is the main reason. Everything is delayed, not only, not only the program, unfortunately. But I'm sure that for the next Congress, we're going to go back to, to, the, to the usual calendar, and we will have the program available in advance. We are still adjusting to this situation. Any further questions? Mm. No, we didn't receive any other questions in the chat. So, when, when will we know who, who is my co chair? Uh, I wrote uh, the name of your co chair in the email I, I sent you last week. Uh, but okay. anyway, tomorrow when I send. Um, when I send the abstracts, uh, I'm going to be sending to both of you together. So you have also, I'm going to say both names and uh, you are going to have the address. So if you didn't uh, read the, the previous email, you're going to receive it tomorrow. Um, so I think we are done. Uh, I would like to uh, finish the meeting. Uh, thank you once again, not only for being available today for this conversation, especially because some of you are very experienced chairs and and um, you, you, you gave your time to be here today with us. So thank you very much. And especially, of course, thank you. Thank you very much for volunteer for being a chair at the World Water Congress. Uh, your work is really important. I think these sessions are the core of the Congress. Uh, that's the only uh, moment or one of the few moments uh, that all the delegates have uh, the floor, they can make questions, they can participate in the debate. This is very, very important for them. Uh, so thank you very much. And I'm confident that we will have a, a wonderful Congress. So uh, I wish you all a safe uh, trip to Copenhagen and um, see you there in 10 days from now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye.